Hello Enchanted Ones and welcome back. This week join me for a very special video as I make over and transform my garden into the woodland fairy vision dreams are made of. But for now, sit back, relax and keep on watching. Hello Enchanted Ones and welcome to a very special video. About a month ago I started making over my garden and of course as I promised I have recorded it all for you. If you haven't seen before in my preparing for spring video I have already planned and manifested what I want my garden to look like this year and I did it in my botanical book of shadows which I've now made over and there's a whole story behind that so if you want to check out those videos be my guest because I really love those videos so today I'm going to be showing you how and what I've done to make it over so far but this is not going to be just this video this is going to be two parts or maybe even three parts I mean it's never ending to be honest so there's just so much to share and so much to do to make everything so magical if you haven't seen my garden before I'll put some clips up now it was just looking a little bit like it needed some TLC it was okay but I needed to get past a few kind of issues within it to make it feel more like me so let us begin our journey and it started of course with the only thing I can see fit to begin with anything painting my first stop was at Bing Q and I picked up this sage green paint. I was so excited to get going and transform my garden furniture that needed much TLC. And I started with my interesting looking bench. I wanted a soft green color, something that wasn't too intense on the eyes. And at first I was so happy with the pastel color. So the more and more I painted my bench, the more it started having this blue undertone and it was different to what it was showing me on the tin, which is so annoying. I left it to dry overnight and the next day it was still blue. I'm just not a blue person, I'm afraid. I like looking at the sky, but anything else within my house, it needs to be green. So, another trip to the shop and I picked up my second paint, this one named Willow, and I got to work. The colour was perfect, a pastel pixie green that was so charming and easy on the eyes. So now I knew I could drench the entirety of the garden Willow Green. First, I was kindly given these trellis panels and I thought they'd be a great way to deal with the wall being too low at the back. Yay, they look so good. Okay, so I think I need probably two more eventually, but I can imagine this with ivy growing up it. What we need to do first though is paint it and I think it's gonna transform it. Okay, so there's one more thing I want to paint and it is my boxes. Now, you might not have seen my boxes here before but I've moved them either side of the patio here because I feel like it's just got this really nice kind of walkway feel as you kind of come out here. I tried yesterday to see what that sage colour looked like on here and it of course was a fail. So yeah, I want it just to be more uplifting. I really do love this colour so much, but just imagine it green. Well, you'll see it in a minute, I'm sure. So <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. I 
love it. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, let's do some more. One by one, I painted the planters and said goodbye to the red. And I don't think I realised how badly I needed this colour to be in my life. It made me feel calm and serene and everything in the garden felt just so much more uplifted to the eye and all of the greens from the plants and the woods started blending in together creating such a softer colour palette to look at. It looks so good. I cannot believe how good it looks. Wow. But it just brings my attention now to this. Um, <laughs> and um, I'm not happy with this now. I mean, if anything, I'd just rip that out and just have access to the woods. That would be my dream anyway. But what I want to do is with the rest of my paint, maybe start painting this corner today, which at the moment has my herbs in. It just looks a bit grotty. And I've always felt a bit claustrophobic in this area because of the colour of it and just because it's a bit dark. We're going to see how far the paint can take me because I only have one litre of it. I'm very excited to see how this place is transformed and then we'll work on this lovely shed. So what do you guys think? I've gone for the striped look. <laughs> Jokes, let's finish it. <laughs> it was a long, long day. Over seven hours of painting in the sun and the heat, but it was well and truly worth it. And it's a simple yet funny thing how a simple color can change everything. I can't believe I never had this idea before. It's absolutely amazing. So it is a week later, I went to B&Q and I got some more paint and it is time to paint that eyesore at the bottom of my garden. I should probably paint that first but the thing is I'm so excited aren't I Charlie? We're so excited to paint it that we'll have to wait. <laughs> Unfortunately, the brighter colour on the outside only drew attention to the mess on the inside, but that's okay. Soon I plan to turn the shed into a bit of a workshop for sowing seeds and my crafts. It's a summer project I need to start soon, but for now, I was complete. morning so this morning I finished the last piece of fence I had literally scraps of paint left but I limited myself and I basically basically done it it's looking really good it's looking green and the whole garden is now just so uplifting to look at. So over the next week or so, I'm just gonna be planting some new things. But also, I've got a very exciting project I'm gonna be doing on the shed. So let's just go with the flow and see what happens. <laughs> I find gardening so therapeutic. Whenever I feel overwhelmed by life, I often resort to gardening. I think the simplicity of it, the feeling of the earth on your hands, and the idea that as long as these plants get their basic essential needs, they will be okay. And when I'm having a rough day, these needs are exactly what I need to go back to also.
So I planted and tidied my herb garden, but on top of this, I have been buying simple woodland plants. The Enchanted Woods has helped me gain a new love for all things woodland, ferns being one of them. I just love the way their leaves unfurl and I can't resist getting different varieties of them when I see them. I was also greeted by a single bluebell from Bulbs, hopefully more to come up next year. I bought these darling foxgloves, soon to have majestic flowers, which is a favourite of the bees of course, and ivy, and plenty of varieties of it. I want my garden to be green all year round and ivy is a great way to do that. I almost forgot my personal favourite, Holly. Her spiky leaves have nothing on her beauty. In fact, they add to it. I have plenty of plants for now, but my garden is far from finished. I'm so glad to say that the day has finally come that I'm not going to be painting in block colour in my garden. Today was the day I was going to be painting a little whimsical moment onto my shed. There was only one thing I had in mind for it and it was ivy. I first mixed a colour from yellow and green to be a darker variation to my shed colour, but one that had the same undertone. And then I needed help from something that was growing in my garden, ivy. I picked three different pieces, one small, medium and large, but these pieces of ivy would be remembered forever because they would in fact become stampers. I simply painted the ivy and placed it onto the shed. A lot of the time, because of the ridges in the wood, it wouldn't create an amazing stamp, but it created an outline. So I filled it in and it was as simple as that. I find ivy to be quite a romantic looking plant. The way it effortlessly climbs and clings. My shed was by no means romantic inside, but on the outside, at least now, it can look like the shed fairies would gather in. So, you have joined me on the present day, finally. <laughs> what are we going to do now is actually, yeah, I'm gonna show you a couple of things I've bought for my garden over the past three to four months. I've also got just a couple of finishing things I want to do in the garden. The first thing I bought for my garden, probably in March, was a bird bath. I've been looking for a bird bath for a long time that has a lot of character, and this woodland bird bath, it is amazing. The little badges on the side and the bird bath itself is this square and has this kind of wooden molding around the outside and I just feel like it screams me. The next thing I have acquired, not necessarily bought but kind of taken from the woods I'm gonna say, is a slab of wood. Now, I want to thank my friend Dingley Dell, who is my woodland friend, who helped me find this piece of wood and helped me carry it back home. So thank you very much. I do not know what to do with this piece of wood now. I was thinking perhaps make it into a table, perhaps maybe turn it into some sort of sundial. Let me know because in part two, I'm gonna be doing that. The third thing I have acquired is this fairy home. And as you can see, it is called Elven Oak. Elven Oak. Are you seeing that properly? Elven 
oak. <laughs> Let's open it up. Okay, so yes, this is gonna go in my garden. It's a little fairy house and it lights up, as you can see. It's got a little door that opens. It's an oak tree and it's called Elven Oak. Need I say more, basically. The most recent purchase I've made for my garden are these little lights that I bought. So it lights up, but also they're ivy lights. And I thought it'd be really lovely to wrap these around something. And if you don't remember from my first video, I told you I was gonna get something for the garden. And it's just the most exciting thing of all. And it is an arch. So I bought this, I'm gonna be putting it up today. I'm not gonna be completely making it over today because I figured let's turn that into a whole video because there's so much I can do. I've got visions of fairies, I've got visions of whimsical trees growing up it. So yeah, we're gonna do that then. So this is my next project and I'm literally gonna start it right now. So let us make it together. So, my first step was to assemble the arch together. This is the same arch that I have in my home and eventually I want to change it a lot. I'm even thinking about spray painting it a different colour but also drenching it in ivy and beautiful flowers. I placed the arch in between the two wooden containers to make a walkway through to the grass from the seating area and twisted what I could with the ivy growing from the containers. Then I started to cover it in the lights. It turns out though that these lights are completely naff. I would not recommend them. The ivy was just not good. I had to improvise and of course I have a lot of ivy hanging around my home so I wrapped this around instead, eventually to be overtaking by the real stuff of course. The next idea was very Alwyn Oak. I had remembered I had a bunch of wisteria from my arch inside so of course naturally I wanted to try it out for now in hope that one day this would be real and beautiful. Then it was time for a few finishing touches and enchanted ones. For now, my garden is complete. love with the transformation. It's just amazing what a lick of paint can do. The colour palette and the planting help me to feel like I am in my own woodland fairy garden and it has brought me so much happiness. I also wanted the garden to feel like it had different rooms, the seating area, the grass and the herb garden at the back to help it feel overall bigger but give it extra interest and the result feels just right. As I sat in the garden, I started to get a little bit emotional. The plan I had designed and manifested was very much coming to life. And it just proves that having a vision and then planning and then following this with hard work can get you where you want to be. Of course, I still have a lot to do. The shed, the arch, and many, many more plants. 
But that's the beauty in a garden. The work and challenges it brings are never truly finished. And the overall benefit of a garden is, we might think we are nurturing our garden, but of course, it's our garden that is really nurturing us. Thank you for watching Enchanted Ones. All my love, Alwyn. This is my next project, so let me make it and let you watch me make it. Hang on a minute.